What's up guys, welcome to another Q&A video where I'm going to be answering questions from my YouTube comments. The first question is from Squanchy. Another supplement question. Now, I'm kind of probably going to start to leave the supplement questions behind because I've kind of answered most of them and I've said the ones that I think work, but uh, I'll answer a few more in this video. Kind of random. Do you have any questions on L-citrulline when it comes to cycling? He says, he, as he understands it, it can work similar to nitrate such as beetroot juice. He doesn't have any idea if it's snake oil or not. Supposedly brings out vascularity. So that's one reason to take it. I uh, love my input. L-citrulline. Not something I'm overly familiar with. Most of the research, especially when I was at uni and the stuff that I've been keeping up to date with is the stuff related to beetroot juice and nitrates. Uh, L-citrulline boosting nitric oxide. It's just doing it via a different pathway. So a similar way that it's improving performance, but just doing it in a slightly different way. Is it effective or not? Yes. Like I do think it could be effective. Is it better than using a beetroot supplement? I'm not sure. I don't think there's a lot of research directly comparing the two. Is it worth a try? Yes. Um, so you probably definitely something you, you could try. Maybe try a beetroot supplement, try L-citrulline, maybe try them together, see if they have a compounding effect. But I don't really have a black and white answer in terms of do I think it's great? I've never used it personally. Not a great answer, I'm sorry, but it's not something I'm overly familiar with. Next question from Richard. The Nero team kit is very nice looking. Thanks, Richard. Uh, did you help design it? No, I had no input on the design of the Nero kit. That is done, well, last year for this year's kit, it was done all by Chris and uh, with some input as well from Luke Mannion, who most of you might not have heard of. He's one of the other team managers uh, alongside Chris. The kit though for next year, so the 2022 Nero Continental kit, uh, Chris got some help from the Rafa in-house designers. So I'm quite interested to see what the kit's going to look like next year. Uh, I haven't seen it. I have no idea what, I have absolutely no idea what it's going to look like. So I'm very interested to see what it looks like. If, you know, if getting a bit of a collaboration between Rafa and Chris um, you know, if that could help improve the design above what is already a nice looking kit. So keep an eye out for Nero's kit next year. Next question from Arif. Um, this was on my gravel bike video. But Jesse, what about geometry? It isn't as aggressive as your road racing bike. Don't we have to ride in the aggressive position more so our body will be able to adapt to the more long and low position on the road uh, that you'll get on the road bike? So very good question. I like that this person's thinking about this sort of thing. This is stuff that's very important. My answer to this though is that it's not a concern for me. I still do ride the road bike a lot. I also do specific work on the road bike to enhance my aero position. So I will do sessions where I'm spending consistent amount of time in my aero position on the road bike. So purposefully getting my back down, getting my head down, bending my elbows and closing off my hip angle, getting in that more aero position. So for example, like a sample session I'll do might be like three hours endurance, and then I might do one hour at tempo output, power output, but in the aero position. Uh, so just, I do spend, do specific work to enhance my efficiency in the aero position. Um, as well, my position on the gravel bike isn't that different to the ride bike. It's definitely more upright. But on the gravel bike, when I've got my elbows bent and I'm getting my back down, it's still a some. It's still fairly similar to my road position. It's not like it's riding a mountain bike and then riding a aggressive road bike. It's it's halfway in between. So potentially could be an issue, and it's a good thing to consider. But I do specific work again to improve my aero position on the road bike. So I balance it out. I race a lot on the road bike. I still train regularly on the road bike as well. So not not an issue for me, but something definitely to consider. Next question, not from David. Do you really know of anybody seriously using stims like modafinil specifically for weight loss? Blasting stimulants and then using sleeping pills to stop the effect seems extremely counterproductive. Yeah, it is extremely counterproductive. This was on my um, Dr. Ferrari forum video where I said one of the reasons people might be using sleeping pills is because they're using strong stimulants during the day as appetite suppressants and then they can't get to sleep. Do I know of anybody doing this? No, not personally. But it is something I do think people would do. Now, thankfully, the cycling community is generally more health-focused and are a bit more switched on to know that that's not a smart, healthy thing to be doing. So thankfully, it wouldn't be overly common in cycling, but I would there would definitely be people doing it, without a doubt. Um, we know 
the crazy things people will do to lose weight. So to think that people might take stronger stimulants like modafinil, then end up having trouble sleeping and then take a sleeping pill doesn't seem too far-fetched for me. Um, especially in other scenes like the gym scene, the fitness scene, it would be uh, a lot more popular. Like does anyone in the old school gym scene maybe like five, 10 years ago remember people doing the ECA stack to lose weight? Um, and that would have a really strong stimulant effect and then they couldn't sleep. Like that was like super popular in the gym scene back in the day. It was just like very, very popular people would use that to um, boost their metabolism to try and lose weight. So thankfully, yeah, not overly popular in cycling, but I just brought it up because there, there would be people doing that, um, unfortunately. So Nick asks, unrelated, but what brand socks do you use? At the moment, I've got a few pairs I'm using. So we've got the Rafa Mainline socks. The Rafa Custom Team Socks. Then I've got uh, Aero Socks, two different variations I've bought from AliExpress, which are quite good. But in terms of a sock recommendation, I actually have one brand of sock that I would strongly recommend. So if, you, if this question was asking, what, do I, what socks do I recommend? There is one brand that for me do socks head and shoulders of anyone else. And the brand is Swiftwick. I don't actually have any more at the moment. These are team socks we got I got on when I was on Mobius in 2017, I think, and they're called Swiftwick. They were really popular. Maybe three or four years ago, everyone had Swiftwick socks. I'll put some photos up. You'll recognize that logo. I'm sure some of you recognize the Swiftwick socks. They've kind of gone out of fashion a bit. Not many people use them now. I don't see them as often, but these socks are amazing. They're extremely comfortable when you first put them on, but the quality of them, they last for ages. Like I only threw out the white ones I had maybe six months ago, which means I had them for like three years. Like so many times I used them and washed them and they just, the, the rate at which they degradate is so slow. I've never had any socks like them. Most socks, you use them for maybe six months and then they sort of like filter to the back of the drawer because they lose their elasticity and you're kind of like, oh, I don't really enjoy putting this on anymore. But the Swiftwick, I think the model, like the, the model that I had was the Swiftwick Aspire 7s. I think that was like the height of them. Incredible. I've never had socks that lasted like these Swiftwick. So if you're looking for socks, I definitely would recommend the Swiftwick ones. Next question from David Ralston. Could someone please tell me if it is fine to drink beta fuel only on a ride or should I have sips of water with it? So good question. Answer would be it depends. Um, in and of itself, there would be no specific reason why you would need water with your beta fuel bottle. Um, but there would be situations where you need more fluid. So if you're mixing beta fuel according to the directions, you'd be having, a, I think it's like a 600 mil bottle, which would have, which would have 80 grams of carbs in it. Now let's say you're, do, you're having 80 grams of carbs an hour, so you'd be having one bottle per hour, which would give you 600 milliliters of fluid. If you're riding in warm or hot conditions, that's not going to be enough fluid. You'll, you'll need more than that. So if you're riding in even just moderate warm conditions, you are going to need water with it from a hydration point of view. If it's obviously if it's hot weather, you might be having you might be needing more than a liter of fluid an hour. So you're definitely going to have be you're going to you're definitely going to have to drink more than just your beta fuel. If you're riding in the cold and you're really not sweating much, then maybe you could get away with just having your 600 ml bottle per hour with of beta fuel. But if you're drinking beta fuel, you're probably going to be doing a pretty hard ride and therefore you're going to be sweating, so you're probably, anyway, even if in the cold, actually now I'm thinking about it, you're probably going to be needing more than 600 mil fluid an hour anyway. So actually, I'm going to change my answer. Chances are, yes, you should be sipping some water with your beta fuel from a hydration point of view, not from a like a effectiveness of the product, but just for hydration. Yeah, I can't think of many scenarios actually where you would be having just your beta fuel because you'd be getting way too many carbs in and not enough fluid. But yeah, it just depends on the temperature that you're riding in and how much you're sweating. So final question from Raphael. This is on my six supplements I take for cycling fitness video. Uh, I'm going to have to at some point stop talking about supplements because I feel like I've already said the ones I think are effective. We know which ones work. I've mentioned it in the Alex Dalset video, said how to use them. There's so many different supplements you can use, whether it's uh, people ask about Modex a lot. Just a whole, this, I could do a video a day on just every different supplement but it's just use the ones that have the most research that are the most common ones like that, like bicarb and stuff like that. Stick with them. Um, but in this question here is asked, no beta alanine. It's known to boost your beta max. 
Yes, like I mentioned Peter Allen in, in the Alex Dowsett video. I don't take it because I, I just don't feel like I need it. Doesn't mean I'm saying you shouldn't take it or that I don't think it's effective. It's just not something I add in my supplement regime because I don't feel like I need it. Maybe next year if I'm doing like a target race, I might do a, a beta alanine loading. Maybe I'll do bicarb as well. But just with the local racing that I'm mostly doing at the moment, I don't feel like I need to be taking these supplements. Um, I'm doing fine without them. So again, yes, beta alanine, feel free to use it. I'm not using it at the moment. Um, I think I'm going to have to sort of draw a line and just say I'm going to stop talking about supplements because... Um, yeah, I've, I've said what ones I, I recommend, um, giving you resources to use. So maybe I'll, I'll stop including supplement related questions from here on in because there's not that much more I have to say about them. That is it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one.